Hello Homemakers, I'm Melinda and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. And today we're making Lime Ribbon Delight. Lime Ribbon Delight is from section A, Seasonal Favorites, Spring, and it's card number five. And because it's St. Patrick's Day, obviously I wanted to make something green. This card, I guess, is meant for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, you can see there's a little shamrock in the background, and she says, for a St. Patrick's Day touch, miniature white clay pipes decorate the pictured cake. I'm not sure what white clay pipes have to do with St. Patrick's Day. That feels like a stretch to me. I don't have any clay pipes, so I'm not gonna do that. But I did think it was appropriate to make something green. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it. This cake looks really simple. You're basically making a boxed cake mix and then kind of putting a layer of jello on top. It could be really easy or it could go super awry. <laughs> I really want a cake that looks as close to the picture as possible. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> For Lime Ribbon Delight, we are gonna need a package of Betty Crocker's white cake mix and then all of the accoutrement <laughs> that goes with cake mix, like the eggs, the oil, the water. We need a package of lime jello, obviously, and some water to make that. We need crushed pineapple, chopped nuts, a little bit of lemon juice, some whipping cream, and some confectioner sugar. All right, so the first step is to bake the cake mix as directed on package. Okay, what am I doing? Mixing cake mix, water, oil, and egg whites, or whole eggs. I'm gonna do the whole egg, right? It's a little over. <laughs> and now we whisk. We're supposed to whisk it vigorously for two minutes until incorporated. <laughs> That's probably well combined, right? like batter to me. <laughs> All right, we're here with our lightly greased cake pans. Um, so I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> the recipe calls for a nine inch cake pan. These are eight inches. I don't know how much of a difference that's gonna make. I assume that we want a nine inch cake pan because after we bake the cake in it, we're gonna put the lime jello in on top of the cake to set in this pan and so you want like enough room for the lime jello layer and so i just want to make sure that the cake doesn't kind of bloat over too much because you want room for the jello to go in there too you'll see what i mean when we get there so i'm just maybe gonna hold back a little bit of the cake batter so that we don't get as big of a cake as you normally would and we'll see if that helps <laughs> make sure that there's room for the jello. But I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll figure it out no matter what. I'm gonna make a mini cake with this because I don't want to turn out a waste. But I'm worried about putting too much cake batter in these pans that are too small. So we'll see what happens to that little guy. <laughs> anyway, let's get these in the oven. <laughs> now we make the jello. So package of jello, put some hot water in it. <laughs> It's really easy. Um, the last time, I say it's really easy, but I can't open the package. <sighs> the last time I made lime jello, I did not enjoy it. I thought it was too artificial tasting, but I was also eating it with like celery and cucumbers floating in it. So <laughs> maybe in a dessert context, I won't feel the same way. So we are doing a cup of boiling water, stirring until dissolved. She's beautiful. Then we are adding half a cup of cold water. Not that cold. <laughs> she said fruit juice or extra water, and I wasn't sure what fruit juice to buy. Like, what does that mean? Like, should I do, should I have done pineapple juice because we're putting pineapples in it? Like, orange juice, grape juice? Like, <laughs> what does fruit juice mean? And I just didn't want to complicate things, so I was like, she said I could use water, I'm just gonna use more water. We're just making jello here. It's not rocket science. There's gonna be plenty of flavor to go around. I don't think we need the fruit juice. So that's done. <laughs> we just have to put it in the fridge until it sets. What does she say, not? She says, 
chill until slightly thickened but not set. And then that's when we're going to stir in the pineapple and nuts. So we will be back when this is slightly thickened but not set. So our cakes are cool and we're going to prepare them to receive the jello. So she says, place two strips of aluminum foil two to three inches wide in each of the layer pans. You want the um, foil to extend over the edges so you could pull it out. Is that enough foil? I guess if I go two strips, I can kind of put one there, another one here kind of. That's what I have to work with, so. Let's see if that one works better than this one. <laughs> this will be our test. So we're doing some A-B testing here. Here's what I don't understand and what I might ignore. We'll see if that's a bad choice or not. She says, place a cooled layer cake in each pan, one layer right side up and one layer upside down. I don't understand that at all because this is the bottom. This was the bottom in the cake pan. And so I'm assuming that this is quote unquote upside down right now. But if I put it right side up, you, if I put this right side up in the pan, you can see that it's not super even, like it's a bit of a dome. And what people sometimes do when making layer cakes is they cut the dome off to even it out. But I think you need the seal of the crust to make sure the jello doesn't soak in. So I don't want to cut the outside crust part off because I think I need that as a protective layer. And so, I don't think pouring jello on this side makes any sense. I think they should both have the bottom on the top, if that makes sense. So I think both of these should go in upside down, not one of them right side up. And if that's a terrible idea, no one's here to stop me, so I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm putting it back in. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one, this one, you can see when I took it out of the pan, it kind of broke, but I'm really hopeful that the jello just kind of <laughs> um, patches that hole. <laughs> and this will be probably the bottom layer, and this will be the top layer since it looks a little nicer. So let me flip that. Put this in here, like this maybe. Yeah. So now you can see what I wanted, I've achieved, which is that they both are relatively flat in the pan and you have this kind of, let's call that like a centimeter or maybe a half inch of room for the jello to kind of live on top. Okay, our jello is thickened but not set. It almost is a little set. I kind of waited a little too long. But I think that's good because I really don't want it to soak in too much. So we're adding a qu quarter cup, <laughs> we're adding a quarter cup of chopped nuts. We're adding a half cup of pineapple. And we're gonna do a little bit of lemon. Okay, this looks nasty. It looks gross. It looks a little like vomit. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty well combined. You know, you can see kind of the pineapple chunks throughout some nut chunks throughout. Smells like lime jello, that's for sure. Now, <laughs> we pour it on top of these. <laughs> this is the scary part. I'll do the bad one first, I think it's mess up. I don't wanna use too much. Kinda of spread it around here. Let me do this one too. Wow, so this is gonna be the top of the cake. You're gonna see this. And so I want to make sure that this looks nice and beautiful. As beautiful as this vomit <laughs> can look. <laughs> I do think it is stable enough that it might not soak down onto the sides like I was worried about. Like this feels pretty set. You see this? Look what I've excavated. <gasps> this is the bottom of the jello that was like at the bottom of the bowl and didn't mix in because it was set. <gasps> wow. Have you seen the movie Slime? Is that what it is? Flubber? <laughs> Love it. 
Flubber. This is the movie Flubber. Now this one, as important as it is for the top to look nice, it's also <laughs> important that this layer feels nice and thick because this is the ribbon. This is the titular ribbon of Lime Ribbon Delight. And so we have to make sure the ribbon looks good. So now we're gonna make the whipped cream frosting. So we are just taking um, a cup of chilled whipping cream and a quarter cup of confectioner sugar. And we're just gonna beat that until it's, it's stiff and whipped cream. <laughs> Right, I think we have whipped cream. She's whipped. I think she's whipped. <laughs> it's not a ton of it, but we're only frosting the sides, so I think it'll be okay. All right, the moment of truth. So these have been chilling for two additional hours, and they were already, it was already pretty jellified when I mixed in the nuts and the pineapple, so I hope that it's jello enough. But we'll find out. <laughs> so I forget which one I thought was gonna be the top versus the bottom. I think this is the bottom. But the wider strips, I guess, yeah, I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna try to lift it out and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> As I'm doing this, I'm wondering if she meant for me to put these strips in a crisscross pattern. Because that would give me more leverage all around. Let me try this. proves tricky. The cake was a little moist on the bottom. I mean, that's a nice solid jello layer. All the way around. Ooh. Okay, maybe not all the way around. But that's gonna get covered up. You won't see that in the slice. Okay, now we put the second one on top. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. How's it look? <laughs> it looks kind of weird. It looks kind of alien. Um, but I think it'll frost. It'll look good once it's frosted. I'm just gonna start frosting. So we've got this whipped cream and we're just frosting the sides of the cake as you see here so that the top is exposed. So I'm just gonna, this is what I'm worried about. Oh, this reminds me of, um, it makes sense now. Cause you would eat, I'm like, why are we doing whipped cream frosting for this? You would eat whipped cream with jello, right? They serve jello with whipped cream. It all makes sense now. I mean, I realize that this isn't as fluffy and appealing of a outside as it is on the photo. So I'm trying to add like waves to it, you know? This is what we have to work with. I'm thinking I kind of go in the spoon because I have more control to try to build up an edge. What's this to do? Whip more whipped cream? <gasps> that was a crucial amount of whipped cream. When we're low on whipped cream, every drop counts. Well, <laughs> let me make some more whipped cream. Okay. <laughs> So we're back. I made more whipped cream and I put it in this makeshift pastry bag. And I think this is really gonna be a game changer for my my intended design. Watch this. That's all right. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Let's go ahead and slice in to our lime ribbon delight and find out if we are delighted to find a lime ribbon. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna cut into this cake and see how it went. Okay, first cut is the deepest. Okay, ready for the big reveal? <gasps> Ta-da! <laughs> there is a lime ribbon. Lime ribbon delight, lime ribbon delight. There's a lime ribbon. All right, let's taste it. It looks pretty good, right? <laughs> I wanna make sure I get 
very wiggly. I want to make sure I have cake, jello. Ah! <laughs> cake, jello, and frosting. It's falling apart. <laughs> Let me take this piece out. Mmm, it's very light and soft and the little crunch of the nuts is nice because everything else is pretty similar in texture like the cake and the jello just kind of like melts into one another. Um, I'm not crazy about the way it's falling apart on my plate right now. <laughs> um, basically the top layer just slid off from the second layer. Mm. I think also this is like the right amount of lime jello in every bite. When I made the cucumber cool salads, that was like a slice of a jello mold. Granted, there's a lot of other flavors going on in there that I didn't like, but having like a full slice of lime jello is gross, but having like a little hint of lime jello in a piece of cake is nice. It's just like the right proportion of that artificial citric flavor, you know? Like it's not overpowering. But I'm just gonna, this is a mess. Do you see my plate right now? <laughs> this is a mess. That looks beautiful. Okay, Lime Rip and Delight. This is a fun one. I'm kind of surprised by how well it went. I thought something was going to go right down the road at some point. Um, it did slip and slide around a little bit on the plate. So like the final eating experience was a little messy, but it looks beautiful and really presentable. I, my one caveat is that the chunks of pineapple and nuts in the lime green jello just like don't look super appealing to me, but the concept overall is really nice. And I like the texture of the pineapple and the nuts. Like I, I liked having that element in the mix. It's just like the final result doesn't look that pretty on top. But other than that, I'm really pleased with how this turns out. How this turned out, it was light and airy and refreshing. It was just the right proportion of jello to cake to whipped cream. Um, I mean, I'd be interested to like try this with a different kind of jello. Like I think doing it with strawberry could be really cool. Um, so yeah, very pleased. Just wish it didn't fall apart on the plate as much. Wish it um, looked a little bit more appetizing on top. So I think I'm gonna give it four out of five red spoons. Okay, back in the box. All right, thank you so much for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy homemaking.